this is Mr. Maffa here uh, coming to you as promised with some answers to your questions uh, that you submitted over the weekend. So I hope you all had a great weekend. We're off to our third week of remote instruction now. Crazy, I know, but uh, we miss everybody at home very much. But I do want to get this information out to you so that I can provide whatever I can from my uh, remote admissions office here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to answer some of your questions in as little time as possible. I don't want to make this video too long for you. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to post it online so that everyone here can see it. I'm going to use my screen to show you around our website a little bit so that I can hopefully um, help you at home figure these things out as you go. So uh, our first question was one asking actually, said, can you explain a little bit more about the dual credit program and what is offered? I'm not quite clear on that. So I'm taking you to our website here. And what you can do very easily is just scroll down the website and right at the bottom here, you'll see quite a few tabs about uh, some of our college prep curriculum stuff. And the middle one right here is about our dual credit program. So if you click that, you'll actually learn a little bit more about the program. Uh, it gives you the summary of the credits earned last year. There's a link right here in the middle that you can click for a PowerPoint uh, prepared by Mr. Scroy. Uh, and that is, he's our dual credit coordinator and he would be able to kind of explain anything via that PowerPoint as much as possible. But the general gist of it is that we work through Rowan College of Burlington County, so RCBC and Seton Hall University. And at this moment, we are able to offer students 56 college credits through our dual credit program, which we're very proud of. Um, and on top of that, uh, we are looking to add to that number. So we're hoping to get that number up. You know, definitely over 60, but hopefully close to 70 uh, by the beginning of next school year in September. And those dual credit classes, uh, for the most part, they are upper class, kind of higher level classes. Some of them being, you know, your your AP classes, your honors classes that are for juniors and seniors. But we do have dual credit classes that you could even take as a freshman. Uh, for example, our graphic design class is one that you can get credits from RCBC for. And that is a class that freshmen can take. So you can get credits through that as well. Now, when you go to college, those credits transfer with you and you could enter college either as a sophomore. Uh, you could save yourself some time, get started on a master's program early if you'd like. So anything like that, these are definitely useful for. Uh, they're great to save you some money in the long run because those credits are much cheaper now than they would be when you're taking them in college. All right. So great question. The second question said, my son is very interested in art. What is your program like? Uh, they didn't specify the type of art, whether that's performing arts or visual arts. So I'll kind of, I guess, go through through both of them for you here. Uh, again, if you go back to our website, I'm just going to take you back to the home page to start with. Um, but under the student life tab, you'll see there's a little bit more about different art programs. So uh, you'll see down here our theater tab. You'll see a pep band tab as well. Um, theater, unfortunately, right now is in a situation where our spring musical is postponed currently. Uh, we do two productions every year. We do a fall play and then a spring musical. The fall play is usually just a spoken play. For those of you who might not want to sing or dance. Um, and then the spring musical is definitely a much larger production. But we do some really great things here at Holy Cross. One of our things you can see even on the screen right now uh, is something that we've been doing now the past two years where our students have gotten to go to a Flyers game and perform on the concourse as well before the game. There's lots of cool things uh, incorporated into that performing arts program. We have dance as a class you can take here at Holy Cross that goes right into that same program. Uh, we have instrumental music as a class you can take next year here at Holy Cross as well. Uh, right now our pep band is small, but we are mighty and uh, we are growing. And that's part of what that instrumental music program is gonna do for us next year. And then our visual arts program is extensive. Uh, we do have a, a dark room on campus so we can do traditional kind of old school photography. So we do offer photography classes that do the digital photography and that traditional photography. We have studio art classes that range from, you know, intro level all the way up to studio art for uh, honors studio art as well. We have graphic design classes where you'll be working more on a computer to create different images and designs. Um, we do have a kiln so people make pottery within our uh, studio art classes as well. We have a stream art class where you'd be incorporating some concepts of math and science from our STEM program into an art class. So there is quite a bit that you can get into within the art world if you are interested at Holy Cross. Um, and there are some really cool things. I would encourage you to go to our YouTube channel 
Um, and if you search for Holy Cross Prep Academy on YouTube, you'll find us. And on there, you'll see a video from our Night of the Arts from last May. And in there, it really showcases a lot of the different art programs that we have. So the next question, what does it mean that Holy Cross has collegiate scheduling? Is that the same as your dual credit program? No, uh, it is not the same as our dual credit program, but I can understand the, the confusion there because talking about college and college schedules and college credits. Um, when we say we have collegiate scheduling, what we mean is that our approach to college prep is to try to mimic the college atmosphere in high school as much as possible. In college, you're going to take five classes in each semester, most likely. You're going to finish those classes at the end of the semester and take finals. Um, that's not the way most high school schedules run. But, you know, we want you to be prepared when you go into your freshman year of college to be ready for that transition. It's a difficult transition. So anything we can do to make that easier is something we'd want to do. So in this case, what we've done is we make our schedule here at Holy Cross the same as a college schedule, except instead of five classes, you only take four because you are still in high school and we are still trying to prep you for that. Uh, so your classes are a little longer. They're 75 minutes long. And through each class, uh, you really have a chance to then get involved in the material and get really in depth into the source that you're working with there. And then those classes end at the end of the semester and you take final exams and you take four different classes the next semester. So you never take more than four classes at one time, which really helps from our students perspective to alleviate some of the stress of not having to think about homework, tests and projects in seven different classes at once. Um, they can really just focus on those four. It decreases the transition time between classes, which is also positive. They could spend more time in the same classrooms. And then on top of that, they come out feeling like they took a college semester, which is really important um, during, again, that transition to college. One other benefit of it is our students get to complete eight courses every year. So that allows them to get into a few other courses that they might not have gotten into at some other schools. You know, the amount of classes you take in the year does vary by school. Uh, most tend to be around seven courses in a school year, seven full credit courses. So it might be like six full credit courses and two half credit courses or something. Here at Holy Cross, you take eight full credit courses throughout the school year. All right, so our next question. Is it too late to apply for financial aid for next school year? Do you have any other scholarships? It seems like this question just continues to go and ask me about those things, which are great questions. And I understand a really big concern for a lot of people, especially when it comes to private school. Um, so for us, unfortunately, right now, we do not have any scholarships left to offer because we actually have already given out all of our scholarships for next school year, and they've all been accepted, which is awesome. Uh, we're excited for those scholarship winners. Um, the way you'd win a scholarship at Holy Cross is you can take the HSPT in the fall, and the top scores are offered scholarships. Uh, but on top of that, we do offer a scholarship program with some scholarships that are funded by our alumni association. And for those ones, we invite students to write an essay. Um, this year's topic was, how will I leave my mark as a Lancer? And you would answer that essay, submit it to me at admissions at hcprep.org. We would review that along with your transcripts and along with your teacher recommendation, really the whole application uh, package. And that's how these scholarships were then offered out uh, based on recommendations from the different alumni who read them as well. So that being said, you know, um, you can always apply because there's always a possibility that, you know, the Alumni Association were to come and say, open up another scholarship. But realistically, those have been accepted for this year. On the other hand, financial aid is a rolling process. So as long as we have uh, financial aid available to be given out, then we will continue to accept financial aid offers. So you can apply for financial aid. Easiest way to do that is through facts. I would encourage you to go through the whole admissions process and uh, apply and once you apply you have an easy connection to facts but you can also find a link to facts on our website here under student life current lancers and then you go to forms and links and if you click on that what you'll see is the first link here under enrollment and registration is facts if you go to that website it lets you create a financial aid application it's reviewed by a third party that way it's not something that we're you know handling internally and then they, they give us a recommendation on how much aid to give out all right so the next question here, are you still accepting transfer applications with everything that's going on right now? That's a great question. We understand it is a difficult time for a lot of people right now. It's a challenging time. You know, our thoughts are with all the, all the people out there, whether they're working in a hospital on the front lines or whether they're a student at home trying to get their work done or that student's parent trying to get some work done while their kid's doing school. We understand there's a lot going on right now. 
But we also understand people are looking forward, as we should be, because things will return to normal um, at some point. And we will have, you know, the next school year will be starting in September like normal. Um, so you might want to know, hey, I'm just thinking about transferring four weeks ago. I'm still thinking about transferring. Um, can I still go through that process? And you absolutely can, even though we are not in the building. You can complete our admissions process entirely online. Uh, there's a tab right here under admissions. If you click transfer students, you'll see. Um, and it gives you kind of all that information. So it gives you the steps. You complete the online application. Then you would submit uh, transcripts. That's going to be the most difficult thing for you right now. But most schools will uh, allow you to access your grades online. And I, what I would recommend you do is go online, get a screenshot or a, a scan of your grades and email them to me at admissions at hcprep.org. Uh, teacher recommendation is electronic. So it's a form you fill out on the uh, online website when you're creating your applicant account. And that comes straight through. For now, I wouldn't worry about your application fee. Uh, and the NJSIA waiver can also be sent to us directly via email. So these are all things that you can complete online we will accept transfer students still and by all means you know if you have questions you can always reach out so i have a, I have a bunch of questions here and the truth is i don't want to hold you up too long because i do know you know everyone's time is valuable right now working from home so we're going to do one more and then any of these that i didn't get to i promise i'm going to respond to people personally via email i'm going to answer your questions i want you to get the information so the last one i'm answering here it says what type of technology do you offer are your students given anything to work with Again, a very relevant question right now, right, because everyone's working from home. Um, so at Holy Cross, we use a one-to-one -one technology program with Chromebooks. So every student gets a Chromebook. Um, all of our teachers are well-versed in Google Classroom. We use that regularly, even when we are not uh, doing remote learning. And so that's something that for us actually was a benefit when we went to this remote learning process. You know, nobody wants to make that transition. But for us, when we made that transition, it was something that was relatively easy to do. All of our kids already had the technology and the equipment that they needed. All of our teachers already understood how to work online. And actually, uh, Holy Cross has been utilizing Cyber Day protocol for uh, snow days already. So when we would have snow days, we would generally just have a Cyber Day instead of a day off. Um, and our teachers would be submitting work online via the Google Classroom for students. So in that respect, we actually kind of already had some practice with this. But yes, you would get a Chromebook. Um, you would give them back over the summer because we do updates on them over the summer usually, and then you get them back when you come to school again in September. So during the school year, it's yours to take home. You know, you're not supposed to download games on it or you, have, you understand you have to treat it appropriately and, and use it for the right reasons. There's a technology agreement you sign at the beginning of the year. But other than that, it is your Chromebook to use to work with during the school year. So that kind of covers the basics of uh, these questions here, again, in as quick of a time as I possibly can. Uh, what I would say is I would remind you to, you know, look around, use our website as a resource, send emails, give calls, even though, you know, we're not in the office, I can access my voicemails remotely. I will give you a call back from a remote source. So I would encourage you to do that. Uh, our website is a great tool as well. And then, you know, you can reach out to me via email. My email is easy. It's just admissions at hcprep.org. And if you send me an email, you know, you will hear back from me. So thank you all for tuning in. Thank you for listening. You know, our thoughts are with you. Our prayers are with all of our students out there. We really do miss having you all. You know, though I love my little studio here, it's um, it's not the same as being in the office, being in the hallways, seeing the kids every day and uh, having our Lancer for a day. Shadow is coming in and out because that's what really makes it fun. So be well, be good, and I will see you again shortly.